Hi, wonderful students, and a happy Tuesday to each of you. Now today I'm sitting in front of a picture of a homemade dam. Can you see, right? Let's see if I can use my finger. Oops, right along there where those rocks and sticks are. Somebody has created their own dam. They stop the water. They use the rocks and the sticks. And this picture looks like they use some plastic garbage can sacks. But whatever they used, they made it so that the water wouldn't go through as quickly. And that way, it would make the water level rise. And so it made a better place for swimming. Well, in today's story about the boxcar children, the children are working on making their own little swimming hole. Let's listen to it and see if they do as good a job as these kids did. Look at how happy those kids are. They're like, yay, we have it. We can swim now. All right. This is chapter eight, a swimming pool at last. The boxcar children were tired, so tired that they slept in until 10 o'clock Sunday morning. When they woke up at last, they hurried through breakfast and went to work on their swimming pool. We'll make a dam across the brook, said Henry. Here is my cart, said Benny. All cart, stones, and logs in it. Good for you, laughed Henry. First, the four children went down to the brook to look at the pool Jessie had seen. The water was quiet here, and there was clean sand all around the little pool. It's big enough for a swimming pool, Henry marked but I don't think it's deep enough. He put a long stick in to see how deep it was. When he looked at the wet stick, he found that the water was only about one foot deep. The swimming pool should be about three times this deep, he said. Then it will be deep enough for us to swim in and not too deep for Benny. We'll build the dam here with logs and stones. So while the other children started the dam, Jesse washed all the stockings. We won't um, need our stockings while we're working on the bricks, she remarked, and she rinsed them and she hung them on the clothesline. So this is a good time to wash them. It was hard work building the dam, but the children liked hard work. Henry and Jesse pulled the logs to the brook and Violet and Benny carried the stones with the help of the cart. Now and then Henry was called on to help with the heavy stones, but the younger children carried most of them. Splash, the stones went right into the water. Henry told them, be careful that they line up between these two trees. The children were watched with delighted eyes as the wall of the stone under the water began to grow higher and higher. The rock wall will help hold the logs in place, said Henry. At last, it was time to lay the logs across the brook. Let's lay the first one between these two trees, said Jesse. Then the tree will hold each end of the logs. Good work, cried ben Henry, much pleased. That's just what we'll do. But when the first big log was splashed into place on top of the stone wall, the water began to run over the top of the log and around both ends. Oh dear, cried Jesse, the water is running around both ends every time. What shall we do? We'll have to put lots of logs on with brush in between them, said Henry. We'll put on so many that the water can't go through. They laid three logs across with three more on top of them and three more on top of them. And Violet filled her arms with brush and held it in place until each log was laid. Henry filled the holes of the ends of the logs with flat stones. Such wet children were never seen before, but the hot sun would dry them off and no one cared. And when the three top logs were laid in place, at last the four tired children sat down to watch the pool fill. But Henry could not sit still as the water came higher and higher up the dam. See how deep the pool is getting, he cried. Just see how deep it is. At last the pool was full and the water came over the top of the dam and made another waterfall. Just like the mill dam, said Henry. Now the pool is deep enough for all of us to swim in. You boys can have the first one, said Jessie. We girls will go and get dinner ready. We'll ring the bell when we are ready. The boys splashed around the pool while the girls made a fire and hung the kettle of brown stew over it, stirring it now and then. Violet cut the bread and then got the butter hard and cold from her refrigerator. When everything was ready, Jessie rang the dinner bell. 
This bell was, the, was only a tin can from the dump. Jessie had hung it on a tree with a string and she rang it with a spoon. Then she got the ladle and began ladling out the stew. That's the dinner bell, said Benny. I know it, come on, watch. Don't you want some dinner? Watch had been swimming too. He came out of the water and shook himself. The two boys ran over to the dry clothes and went to Sunday dinner. Let's ring the bell again, said Benny. I like stew, the stew better even today, said Henry, eating hungrily. That's because we worked so hard, remarked Jessie. Let's go for a walk in the woods this afternoon. Oh, let's, cried Violet. Let's go exploring again. The children washed their dishes and then started on their walk. As they went along, Watch began to bark. At first, the explorers were a little frightened. Oh, what is it, cried Violet. Maybe it's a rabbit, said Henry. But then he saw it. It was a hen running away through the woods. Watch ran after her, but Henry called him back. Don't run after that poor hen, he said. The hen has a nest, remarked Benny. What, said Jessie. She has some eggs in it, said Benny. Come here and see. Jessie looked on the ground where Benny was pointing and saw a nest with five eggs in it. A runaway hen, said Jessie. She wanted to hide her nest so she would have some chickens. We'll have the eggs for supper. I know how to cook eggs. The eggs made a delicious supper. Jessie put them in a bowl with a little salt and Violet took a spoon and stirred them as hard as she could. Put a little milk in it, Violet, said Jessie, and stir them some more. Henry started the fire. The big kettle was hung over the fire and Jessie put in some butter. She watched the butter until it was nice and brown and then she put the eggs in. Sit down, she said. Be all ready to eat when the eggs are done. Violet put the blue tablecloth on the ground. She got some butter and bread and plates and spoons and the children all sat ready for supper. Here I come, cried Jessie. Hold out your plates. Oh, Jessie, cried Benny. This is the best meal I ever ate. I found the eggs and you cooked them. Yes, you did, Benny, said Henry. Thank you for a fine meal. Tomorrow, we'll just have bread to eat and milk, said Jessie. But when tomorrow came, the children had more than bread and milk, as you will soon see. And that's the end of that chapter. So they were able to make their own little swimming pool. I bet it was hard work. I remember when I was in Oregon a couple summers ago and we started building a dam across the little creek. The water just goes around and through and over. Water is very powerful, so it's hard to stop water. So they must have worked really hard to be able to stop that water so that they could get a little swimming pool. Fun, huh? All right, for today's journal, will you tell me something hard that you've done? Something that took a lot of work, but you were so proud when you were done with it. I'll be excited to see those. So send them to me. I love seeing them and make sure you draw a cool picture to go with it. All right, have a good day. We'll see you tomorrow.